You see, over the last couple of decades, there has been tremendous growth in the field of brain research because we have these amazing technical scanning machines of the brain and they can find out so much more than what they ever thought was possible to know. And when we, what is really cool is that we can funnel this down into information that you and I can use in our day-to-day -day life. So what we're gonna talk about today is your innate brain wiring. According to current scientific research, this is coded in your individual DNA. And when you become intimately connected with your innate brain wiring, you are able to achieve more success in life, business, and in relationships. I kind of got that name when I started researching the brain about 20 years ago. So I'm gonna share with you some of the results of the last 20 years that I have been researching the brain researchers. And I'm gonna help you to step into your power and really truly rock your natural gifts, all right? But I'm gonna start out, who in the audience could use a little bit more brain power? Anybody? <laughs> right here, ready? Heads up. Woohoo! I tell people, like I said, I started doing brain research quite a few years ago, and I tell people that the most important asset that you have, far more important than any stock portfolio you have, any bank account, any real estate holdings, is your brain, your brain. And when you learn to tap into your brain, your limits disappear. When you become in, just intimately involved with your innate natural gifts, that are encoded in your DNA, you learn to achieve things that you never thought were possible. As far as being an entrepreneur, I tell women they have to, women especially, because women tend to hold on to so many things, is to do regular brain dumps. In other words, once a week, sit down and just literally take everything that's in here and put it down on paper. Mm -hmm. Because it gets it out of your brain. And it helps oh God, you. Do that. Yeah, it's a it's an amazing thing to do how much and just write doesn't have to be in any type of yeah. organized structure. The idea is to get it from here onto a paper. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help to release the stresses in your brain because you're not going to be ruminating on all of this stuff so okay. much. So <laughs> that's a that's a really good key too. So what are tips to train our mind differently? Well, again, it just simply visualizing what it is that you need to do and then connect it to some connect it to a routine like we did this morning mm -hmm. connect it to a routine that you're used to what's your mo morning routine what are the things you need to remember connected to everything connect those pictures to everything that you do on a regular basis your drive to work your morning routine in the kitchen whatever it is by connecting the picture what you need to remember to something that your brain already has locked in your memory Phenomenal. you're going to remember easier we've linked all your information to our website congratulations awesome. on the book and the big Thank event you. coming up i'll help you do you remember where you put your purse i do it's in here the green room let's go see let's just go make sure <laughs> see if she knows what she's talking you don't about believe her right here she's, yeah, she's right. right all right you guys. she's in control <laughs> nice work you. sir thank you julie thank you mark appreciate it now what I want you to do is kind of fold your arms like you're mad at somebody, right? Again, some of you have the right arm on top, some have the left arm on top. Again, not an IQ test here. Now, without beating up the person next to you, I want you to switch your arms and do them the opposite. How does that feel? Yeah, you can't do it, can you? Uh-huh, yep. Doesn't work, doesn't work. I see a lot of people that are like, what's wrong with me? No, nothing's wrong with you. The point is, is there's one way that your brain does it very naturally. It's easy. And then the other way, not so easy, right? It is no different than your brain personality connection. In terms of business people and corporations, how would this research and how would this kind of science really benefit their employees or their managers knowing more about their employees? Tremendously, because here's the thing. How much money is spent on training an individual for a particular job? I mean, there's a huge learning curve that goes into any new hire. Um, that alone, knowing where to place people in the right job that matches their brain. You don't want somebody that's going to be working in the worst part of their brain to in that particular position because they're not going to be happy. They're not going to be productive and it's gonna lower morale, so you don't want them in that position. So if you know this information ahead of time, you know which job to put them in. Then there's there's other portions that have to do with it, introversion, extroversion level, communication styles, auditory, visual, kinesthetic. 
when you factor all of this brain personality connection into a manage when a manager is looking at each individual employee or worker with this in mind they're able to communicate their ideas and thoughts better to them so there's a lot less miscommunication that goes on and that of course just raises the whole working environment to a much more positive one people get along better there's not as much uh, water cooler talk you know it's just a much better place and atmosphere to work in and more gets done it's more efficient and bottom line is there's a better profit line margin fantastic we're going to imagine that this room is a brain okay this is a big brain it is laid out with the front your anterior lobes here your posterior lobes there front and back really really quick i want all the bosses the red triangles to come up in the front left of the room and please stand here i want that is section one if you scored highest in section one go up to the front left portion of, of the room or the brain room. If you scored highest in section two, that is the blue square, I want you to move to the back left portion of the room. If you scored highest in section three, that is the purple imagination bubble. Come up here to the front right corner of the brain. If you scored highest in section four, that is the green circle, I want you to go back by Rebecca. If you're tied, I want you to think, what is your ick quadrant? What of the four do you like the least? Stand diagonally opposite, and I'll explain that in just a minute. So whatever is your ick quadrant, the one you really, 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 really don't like, and stand diagonally opposite. Okay, so here's where it really becomes applicable in, one, in success in your life and business and relationships, okay? Diagonally opposite section of the brain is your ick quadrant. It is your it quadrant because this is where you do not naturally fold your arms. You do not naturally fold your hands. As a matter of fact, it takes a hundred times as much energy for you to work in the functions over here. It takes a hundred much, a hundred times as much energy for you to work in those functions. So, Red triangles have to be really, really careful in life, business, and relationships that they don't pop the green circles, right? Because it happens. When you are addressing business transactions, you can't think sender, you have to think receiver. When you are in sales, incredibly important, you cannot go to them with a big picture. They want the details. You cannot go to them with the details. You'll lose them instantly, okay? Does this make sense? It all has to do with energy expenditure in the brain. There's a lot more to this information, obviously, because this is truly important for your very health, and I want you to be able to improve your life, your business, your relationships, and get past blocks that you didn't even know existed. Because here's what happens. We're born with our natural, beautiful brain personality connection right here. And then somebody says something mean to us. Then we have parents, <laughs> then we have teachers, then we have siblings. And I tell people there's nothing more damaging to an individual's self-esteem or feeling of self-worth than the insignificant things said to them by significant individuals in their lives. So what, your family. So what winds up happening, you're supposed to be way over there, but you wind up in life way over here spending 100 times more energy every second to do every single thing in your life. So we gotta help you chart the course to find your way back over here so that you can float down the river instead of swimming up the stream. Step into their power and rock their natural gifts. Thank you.